Good evening, everybody. Welcome to live coverage of round four for this year's 2024 VUKC I Racing Trophy. A new circuit for the Club 100 Sim Racing Championships. Rutskergen in Norway is our host circuit for uh, this evening. And uh, a very exciting evening it, uh, it entrusts to be myself and Howard Mitchell in the virtual DDMM comms box. Good evening, Howard. How are we doing? Good evening, Andrew. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us once again. Oh, we're doing okay, mate, and I'm looking forward to, as you say, a new circuit. I will be totally transparent up front. I haven't even driven this one um, for, for, for shame, you may say, because it has actually been on the service for a year About a now. year, yeah. It's been around for a while, so I should have uh, driven it. I haven't, though. Uh, so it's going to be uh, an interesting one for me on that point alone. But uh, we will have to see that Formula Fords have raced around Rudskogen in, in real life. Uh, so it's a, a real world combination, if you like. And, uh, well, the championship hasn't disappointed so far, has it? So no. uh, if I was a betting man, I would be, uh, I would be going for... Uh, uh, I'd be saying we're in for an interesting evening, and I'm confident we are. So, uh, yeah, can't wait. Uh, a a test is what I would say for the drivers. That, uh, a number of them. True. I don't think it's yes. going to be a driver's favourite, but in, in some ways I think that's a good thing. It's going gonna, it's gonna to produce some good racing. Let's have a look at the championship scores. This is the penultimate round of, uh, of this competition with places in the Club 100 main championship, the main sim racing championship, up for grabs still. There are championship scores after three rounds or nine races as we, uh, we have had so far this year. Sam Sanders is at the top on 4.11. Ross Steele second on 3.96. First of the intermediates, James de Havilland, the FF 1600 specialist, is third. Uh, Henry McKenzie Friedman is fourth. Matthew Graham fifth. David Whitehouse also doing well uh, there in the intermediate sixth. Top of the other classes as well. Murray Adams seventh in the points after a, a wobbly start has really uh, found his feet here in this uh, in this format. Uh, Antonio Gitsonio is your rookie leader but isn't here tonight. Uh, may well be watching from Bali. Hello, Antonio. Hope uh, hope your sun lounger is good. Um, it's good that I bring up Antonio though because what that does mean for Antonio is whilst he can still very much win the rookie element of the championship, he now cannot score the 20 bonus points a la the British Kart Championships for attending every single round. That is the same to be said for Josh Ladd. So Josh Ladd, you see there, 14th in the points at the moment on 288. A very good average uh, score in terms of the number of races. You know, effectively done six of the nine races that we've had so far, Howard. But this championship's wide open again, whereas in previous times, you know, a dominant winner but having a round off would still very much be on top. It's now really thrown it open that Josh Ladd's in effect, on his normal level of performance, got to beat everybody by at least 20 points to overcome anyone who's going to potentially get that bonus at the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's an interesting uh, aspect of this championship. Um, obviously, this championship is about building, uh, you know, uh, building up people's skill level and... and, and in order, to, we also want to build people's engagement. Um, so, yeah, really interesting aspect. That's why it's there, and it creates this interesting characteristic. Check a flag about to go out for the practice session. Uh, we will go into sole qualifying. Oh, lone qualifying, is, uh, as it's actually called for everybody. Three laps as ever. Uh, so very much an opportunity for drivers to get the tyres up to temperature and then have two proper flying laps and we have seen this be a pretty big factor in the last couple of rounds if we go back to two weeks ago uh, well actually a little bit further back shall we say more to like a, a month ago Howard when Henry McKenzie Friedman kind of stole the march on everybody uh, with the tyre warming strat alerted well we alerted everyone to what he was doing uh, at Okayama everybody then copied at Laguna Seca and uh, for reasons unbeknown to us Henry wasn't able to get out and uh, do all of his three flying laps. And it, and it showed if you don't get the tyres up to temperature with this car, you're going to be, what, half a second off the pace around a 90-second lap? Yeah, and it's going to be a particularly interesting aspect this round, Andrew, because we, you sort of alluded to it not perhaps being the driver's favourite, although I'll remind everyone that in order to have your favourites, you have to have your ones that aren't. Um, 
getting the tire temperature in, into these cars, uh, get, sorry, getting the tire temperature into the tires of these cars, I should say, um, proving a little bit of a challenge for these drivers. This this circuit has a lot of height undulation. Um, this, uh, in fact, I'm gonna this Herman Tilke design circuit has a lot of height undulation. I know there are some people who feel uh, strongly about Tilke design tracks. This is one with plenty of uh, ups and downs. Uh, it means that the car can go light. It means that uh, you know that these cars, by design, have very little downforce. And so it could be an interesting qualifying session, Andrew, for how these drivers get heat into their tyres. And then if they go into a push lap, they've got to make sure they don't stuff it up. Absolutely. Uh, we're also having a bit of a competition with the chat tonight. Uh, hello, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, as far as we're aware, Howard, this, corner, uh, this circuit has no official corner names since the 2012 renovation. Uh, so at the moment, we have our own uh, heading mm -hmm. straight away into the start of the lap, into the John Cleland complex uh, that is a very niche reference uh, 10 points to you if you understand that one uh, but we are open to uh, changing the corner names of this circuit as we go across the next two hours aren't we Dave? we certainly are we've gone with a preliminary one of Symes loop for this next bit this fast pace uh, turn three as the car sweeps down the hill and, and then round to four um, difficult corner long right hand of that to, to get right and then we go into these S's uh, that's one where we really didn't use our imaginations. Well, you, you, you've got to call them the S's, haven't you? You've got to. Um, and I can't remember what we called the next one. Uh, that was Apricots, because <laughs> it reminds me a lot yeah. of, uh, of well, this whole section reminds me a lot of uh, Apricot Hill on Gran Turismo. Yeah. That's the only reason. Uh, through the hairpin. Yeah. And then I think this is the one we're calling Paddock, because yes. every racetrack has to have a corner called Paddock. The fact that it doesn't Go next to the paddock is irrelevant. You're oh, facing the paddock when you turn it. If you can send it hard enough, you'll end up in there. And yep. then, and this one we're really unsure of. It kind of looks like a golf club or yeah, something else. I, I don't know. I, su I suggested Minim because it looks yeah. like the musical note of a Minim, but that's not a very grand sounding name for a, a final corner. The exits of it is quite important, by the way, because it's not, it's not a short straight here on the start finish. Um, you know, so it's going to be uh, quite crucial. Uh, as they head towards the John Cleland complex, which frankly is the one corner name I'm saying is non-negotiable. Yeah, that's that's uh, staying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so John Aidy goes across the line, goes third fastest. Good lap time from uh, from John there. Murray Adams straight to the top of the time sheet. So this is drivers coming in to complete their first full flying lap. Uh, and for as we know from previous rounds, for a number of the drivers, this will have been their tyre preparation lap. So not necessarily. Uh, the lap that is reflective of true pace. I'm feeling like I'm back at the FIA karting again. I know they're doing all of that on the uh, the Maxis tyres in the OK Juniors at the weekend. Uh, there's Josh Ladd, who's gone sixth fastest on that first tour of the circuit. Uh, now having a look at Logan McAllister. Uh, Logan was racing at the weekend in the uh, not in the Cadets. He's moved up. He's into the Juniors now and uh, had a very good run at Rye House. If you missed any of the, uh, the pictures from Rye House at the weekend, do go and check them out on the Club 100 Facebook page. And uh, the next action, in fact, of the Cadets and Juniors, whilst I'm using Logan as a plugging opportunity, will be the first live-streamed Club 100 action in real life of the year. Uh, yourself, mate, will be at, uh, at Glenny Gores. I unfortunately won't be, because we've got British Car Championship duty, but... Uh, Jacob Harris standing in for that one for uh, for a bit of Welsh action. How apropos! Oh yes, indeed. The, no, uh, the, that we couldn't have played it better if we mm. tried. Well, we did try. That's how that's how well we did. Uh, but yes, uh, oh, I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that definitely, and uh, getting into some uh, Club 100 action in the in the uh, in the real <laughs> in the real world what do we always say the full in full metal, metal. The full metal racing. that's the one uh, um, time's coming in yeah. as uh, and Henry Mackenzie Freeman uh, posts a great time there who else is out there on a, a fast tour of the track Murray Adams is trying to improve he did have a provisional pole for a while yep uh, did Murray as our, um, our clubman's points leader here we go through the S's section Although it is the S's, I think it's fair to say quite a different uh, beast to the S's a la Suzuka or, or other circuits. You've got 
very different uh, height undulations through that section. Good evening to, uh, good evening to Kirith, who's just tuned in. He's uh, up for uh, the action here tonight. Staying aboard here with Murray Adams. You can take a big step towards uh, being the Clubman winner, class winner tonight. He's got a healthy lead over George Balotzi and Lawrence Vines and has attended every round so far. So as long as uh, Murray can get some racing laps in tonight, full and complete ones, he will be on for an extra 20 points when we get to Virginia International Raceway in a few weeks' time to complete the season. Over the line goes Adams. Is this going to be improvement? My goodness, yes, it is. Murray Adams to the top of the timesheets, 127.834. Someone's been putting their practice in. What can Henry Mackenzie Friedman respond with as he comes across the line? Is it an improvement? It's not, not an improvement. Oh, it is, but not enough. Oh, sorry, it is. It is uh, improvement in time, but not in position. And that's uh, his qualifying run. Wow. Well, this is a result that I don't think many people would have been expecting tonight. Who else is still out there and yet to complete their laps? Uh, Alavo Castro is, I think, still uh, out there on a fast one. Look at John Hady up in fifth place. Oh, yeah. is that's going to be oh. something that we see a few times tonight, I think, around with Skirken. That's... Uh, the left-hander of Paddock, very tricky indeed. And Lavo Castro is showing just why. Matt Hale Josh. is on a lap as well. Josh Ladd is the lowest place Premier driver at the moment. Oh, he's, well, been, he's, been doing too much, he's been doing too much super formula in the wets round at Road Atlanta. <laughs> I was having a watch of him on uh, Basic Ollie's channel earlier on today. Uh, uh, Fat, by the way, the real, real world uh, Formula Ford lap record round there. Uh, 126.2. There we go. Just for reference. Uh, Matt Hale over the line, 17th, but does have another flying lap to go. Has he got it? Yeah, he'll have enough time to get round and uh, complete the lap, as will James Fremont. Uh, Richard Sanders and Tom Holland, I think, are going to start from the back in this one. Logan McAllister. I think Logan McAllister's had an off track on every single one of his laps, so Logan McAllister mm. going to be starting this one from the back. Here's Sam Dimelo over the line. Does Dimelo improve? No, stays it might 18th. Have been an off track. Uh, yeah, not entirely sure that was a valid lap for him. Uh, we've got a few more. I know, sorry, that's all drivers across the line for their last laps, apart from this man here, Mr. Matt Hale. So, Matt getting some uh, some coverage. Yeah, do you Tactical remember the timing of going out on track? Yeah, it's the inverse of uh, back when they had the qualifying hour in Formula One and you'd, you'd send your cars out first to get the, the, the air time. This is the inverse of that. I've just realised that's making that. Are, are you telling me that we're now. comparing Matt Hale to Alex Young back in the day? <laughs> um, can do. Uh, we could take your pick of drivers who might have been in that position. <laughs> Alex Young is a great example. Well, here comes Alex, I mean, Matt Hale across <laughs> the line. Can he improve from 17th place? The answer is yes, to 16th place. A one minute thirty point three. Yeah. Well, hey. Can't say fairer than that. Some uh, some improvement there. And that is that's, everybody. That's all she wrote on that, one, yeah? that is all she wrote on the qualifying. So I think we've well, we've got a clubman on pole. We have indeed. Uh, in the form of Murray Adams. The uh, the campaign for Murray Adams to be promoted up to uh, Premier Class will be delighted with that result. Uh, but I think so will Murray and uh, David's quite uh, correct to point out that he's done a few of the official races around here. Uh, mm. So that's probably helped out quite a bit. Uh, let's have a look at the grid then for race number one, if it's your first time for this series. Three 25-minute races like BUKC in real life to enjoy this evening. Murray Adams will start this one for pole position. Henry McKenzie Friedman alongside on the front row. Sam Sanders, championship leader, starts on row two alongside Matt Graham. Brilliant qualifying from John, John Adey. Uh, starts on the third row, uh, by far the highest of the rookies. Ross Steele alongside him on that third row. James Havland and David Whitehouse, the two leaders in the clubman, uh, sorry, in the intermediate uh, class. They start on row four. Josh Ladd has work to do there from row five and is joined by, by Matthew Shawnee. Lawrence Vines and George Pelosi, uh, the two other clubmans 
uh, in the BUKC iRacing Trophy start on row number six into the second half of the grid, which is filled uh, with rookies and intermediates. Alavo Castro will be on row seven. Uh, will be joined by Simon Delamere, eighth row of the grid, Eric Mignon and Matt Hale. Ninth row of the grid, James Fremont and Sam Dimolo. Tenth row of the grid, Logan McAllister and Tom Holland. 21 car field will be completed by Richard Sanders. That'll be a, a long formation lap for all of the drivers here. Uh, Howard Mitchell will be back with us uh, shortly. Keep your comments coming in. Let us know who you're supporting as well. Uh, keep your corner name suggestions coming in as well. And uh, also it's that point of the year where we're going to be starting to decide what we do with the summer and also making the plans for the main championship later in the year. So if you've got any suggestions of what you'd like to do, yes, yes, yes. I've seen all of your suggestions for Charlotte Roble in the West. Uh, it is being considered. Uh, then put them in the chat and we can see what we can do for the rest of 2024. Formation lap underway. How are you, are you back with us? I am, yes. Sorry. Uh, the uh, I've, I've had strong words with the graphics division. Um, uh, I'm not sure what it happened at your end. it with the hammer? But it, just, it just froze on us. It's okay. Uh, right. Um, uh, very good opportunity this moment, I think, for, for Henry McKenzie Friedman. Yes, definitely. Uh, so, uh, is it the case that if he can just hold position here, where where are we at in terms of his newcomer? Yes, because he's because he's very uh, much one of the contenders in the newcomer award. So, it's two places available, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, going straight through into the Club 100 Main Championship for iRacing racing uh, entry fee free, uh, winning overall and also being the top newcomer. So a newcomer defined as someone who has done two or less uh, events with Club 100 Sim Racing Championships in the past. Uh, Henry McKenzie Friedman is very much qualified for that in consideration before the start of the season he'd done zero. Uh, he is, hasn't quite got the absolute lead in the newcomer stakes at the moment. That's with James de Havilland but in terms of how the drop scores work Henry McKenzie Friedman's max possible score is a good chunk bigger than James's. So if you can hold this position here and uh, take advantage of James Havlin being a little bit further back uh, in the train here, this could be a very key race. This race right here, race number one for, uh, for that newcomer award. Safety car will be in at the end of this lap. Plenty of opportunity for the drivers to get tyre temperature up, brake temperature up. First of three races. Remember the second race. Grid for that is determined by the finishing order of the first. Third race, finishing order of the second. Murray Adams on pole position. Big chance this for him to really steal a march on his club and rivals, George Pelosi and Lawrence Fines. Howard, over to you for the start. Indeed, Murray Adams then will have eyes on the lights. The engine notes will rise and away we go. We're racing at Rutskogen for the first time in Club 100 of BUKTI racing history into turn number one. How are we going to be around here? Nothing too dramatic. No one uh, going for any, uh, any big moves in these early phases. I really do think that this will be a circuit where the drivers do, to a certain extent, want to bed themselves in. Mm. Nice start, though, from Murray Adams as they head down the hill through uh, Symes Loop. As uh, There's a wide moment there for Matthew Graham, but he's able to, uh, to tuck back in, not under immediate threat from Ross Steele. And already, Andrew, I mean, great to see uh, no... I can't see any incidents throughout the field, which is a really positive sign, but uh, I think the driver's showing this circuit the uh, respect it deserves early on. Yes, it's a, it's a pretty long race, 25 minutes for the drivers. Henry McKenzie Friedman having a little bit of a look to the inside there down the hill and through the hairpin back up towards the final sector now through Paddock Corner. If you get it really wrong you'll end up in it and then in towards 
final looping section at the end of the lap. Is there a problem for Tom Holland, Tom Holland. there in the, uh, in the Warwick Motorsports car? I think there is. I don't think Richard Sanders has taken the start of the race either. So it's Adams leading from Henry Mackenzie Friedman. Sam Sanders there in third place. Matthew Graham fourth. Ross Deal fifth at the moment. This is a good spot for Sam Sanders and his championship lead, Josh Ladd, has him improved on that first lap, but only up to eighth. Key sections of this circuit where, you know, it, it, it's it's not a circuit where there's an overtaking opportunity on every corner. You know, you've got to you've got to match through the technical sections here. Although Rory Adams definitely feeling the need to go defensive there into turn three, it takes a tighter line through four as we're looking at the back of him from on board with Henry Friedman. Then through this technical section of the S's, very new, very unlikely to get a pass opportunity in here through this uh, left-handed apricot corner, as we've called it. There might have been an incident for Sam Dimelo further down the order. Uh, and then this hairpin, we saw a little half look from Friedman on the first lap. I think he's going to be a little far back to have a go on this second lap. Yeah, that's going to be uh, a bit ambitious for Murray going from that far back. This is a quick look at Sam Dimelo. I think he's had a problem in the early stages. has fallen off the back of the group. Back at the front of the order. Murray Adams, well, this is looking pretty good for the Scotsman at the moment, holding off this train of premiers. Indeed, show really good pace early doors here. But not able to show him a full fresh pair of heels, is he? He's kept on this. And uh, which is what we like to see as Freeman looks to the inside at turn number one. He gets ahead. Is he going to be able to keep it within trap limits and keep it all under control through two? Yes, he is. And like that, the lead switches, but Murray Adams is going to try and get alongside on the way down the hill. Incident further back for Matt Hale and uh, Eric Mignon as well, but this for the lead of the race, bold stuff Whoa. from Murray Adams through turn three. He'll have the inside for four, but Henry's going to hold it round the outside. He will have the inside line for the first bit of the S's. How's this one going to come out in the wash. It's still side by side through the S's. Sam Sanders uh, won't need a second time of asking if the opportunity arises and he is going to find an opportunity here. Friedman to the lead of the race and it's put Murray Adams all out of sorts wide there out of uh, out of six I believe that was. And he feels he has to go defensive now to stop uh, to stem the flow of cars getting past him but it's Sam Sanders up to second and Henry Friedman to the lead of the race and still the challenges are coming for Murray Adams. Matthew Graham all, uh, all over the back of him now as uh, De Havilland and Ross Deal do battle as well over fifth place. Yeah, really good stuff once again from the BUKCI race. Trophy down the inside, Ross Deal taking position from James De Havilland, who's now got the attentions uh, of, is that Josh Ladd coming through? Yes, it is. So Josh Ladd with the red roll hoop indicating that that is a premier driver in that cart. One of the top ranked drivers in Club 100 Sim Racing Championships, if not iRacing in the world. One winner of the top split of the Sebring 12 hours at the weekend. But having to work hard here, that's him up to sixth place. And good positioning once again from both Ladd and de Havilland. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lap ago, but uh, worth reflecting on that lead battle. That was beautiful stuff between Murray Adams and... Uh, Henry Mackenzie Freeman and uh, I have to say as well it, it's changed again hasn't it because whilst I wasn't looking at it uh, Sam Sanders is back down to fourth there so a moment for Sanders has allowed uh, has allowed Murray Adams back up to second place oh change for the lead change for the lead yeah. a wide moment for Henry Mackenzie Freeman has allowed Murray Adams back through and that is a classic with Skurgan so easy to make a mistake round here as the cars go light around the outside now Murray uh, Matthew Adam, uh, Matthew Graham trying to get on the inside now of Henry Mackenzie Friedman is going to do so but Murray Adams is away at the moment into a healthy lead of three quarters of a second yeah brilliant stuff from Murray Adams straight back to the front uh, Matthew Graham up and through into second there's all changed once again here it's not the easiest track to overtake, but likely when we're getting them, they aren't, they aren't half, uh, they ain't half entertaining. Uh, side by side for second place into turn one, and Friedman is back through and up into second. Well, this is almost, uh, <laughs> this is getting a little bit 
close to Carter at the moment. We've got a breakaway leader at the front of the field. The rest of the order needing to keep themselves organized to close the leader down, but not quite able to do so. Let's have a look again at what happened earlier on in the lap. So that was Sam Sanders running wide. That allowed Murray Adams back through into second place. And Matthew Graham, okay. Yeah, so that's how Sam Sanders went from second to four. And of course, Murray Adams went on from there to take the lead of the race sometime later. Indeed. Looking a bit further down the order, John, John Ailey still holding his part of this main yeah. group. Right at the back of it, there in eighth place. Uh, missed last time out in Laguna Seca, so we know John cannot score the 20 bonus points for perfect attendance at the end of the season. But performances like this across the course of an evening will set him right back up to the top of the rookie standings. iRacing dollars on offer for the winners of it. Look at this! Look at this! Nearly 3-4 wide going through the final quarter. This is side by side between Friedman, Sanders, Graham and Deal. All of the friends fighting amongst one another. And Murray Adams is just streaking away at the front here. 1.4 seconds clear. Yeah, this is great, great stuff from uh, from Murray Adams, but highly entertaining stuff here going on behind him. One wonders if the drivers should perhaps seek to, to work together a bit more, but it's a long evening, as I say. So maybe the drivers are now at the point of wanting to bed themselves in where they go, OK, let's, let's try a bit of passing round here as well. See how that goes. On board with Ross Deal. Henry Friedman, I think, would certainly want to sort of co collaborate, cooperate with each other for a little bit just to see if you can reel Murray Adams back in. He has, he has got that type of gap that it's just threatening, isn't it? Could go either way. If you start working together now, you you might catch him back again. If you keep fighting, then uh, it's just going to grow and grow. I suppose that's always true, but that, that two-second gap is sort of the point where it's uh, it's decision time. Murray Adams is very strong, Howard, coming out of the uh, the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. Pulled out a tenth and a half over the rest of the, uh, the field that time around. Still got 20 cars running in this one, looking a bit further back. Let's have a look at Lawrence Vines here. Red, black and white car with the blue roll hoop, indicating that yeah, he is a clubman driver. The... Uh, Categories for the drivers. Everyone in the same fixed setup, remember. Mike Club 100 of the UKC in real life. Whether a driver is a Premier, a Clubman, an Intermediate, or a Rookie depends on their sustained I rating over a period of time, not just on uh, one day in history or at the point of registration, and also uh, combined with their known racing history in Club 100 Sim Racing Championships. Prems, obviously, for the uh, drivers with the best proven record, then the clubmans, then the intermediates, and then the uh, and then the rookies as well. But performances like that can show that uh, if a driver in one of those lower classes can really get tuned in, they can take it to the premiers. Have a look at a replay. This is James Fremont. Is this Logan McAllister or Sam Dimolo yeah, go down the Dimolo. inside? Yeah, so Sam yep. Dimolo down the inside, taking 16th place. On a little bit of a recovery drive because I think he um, uh, he had an unforced error or some kind of issue on the first lap that lost him some time. It's a good little battle here now uh, going on. Well. It was a good little battle before. It was David Whitehouse versus Lawrence Vines, but Logan McAllister has caught up onto the back of this to make it interesting. Two intermediates and a clubman. Vines down the inside. Whitehouse. Whitehouse leaves it up for him. Oh, nearly interlocking wheels there. McAllister's going to stick down the inside. Beautifully take 11th place away from Logan McAllister. And now we'll set about David Whitehouse's top 10. Yeah, really nicely read there by McAllister and possible opportunity for Matthew Shawnee as well because he uh, he's now right on the tail of Lawrence Vines after Vines had that wide moment through turn number two. And yeah, immediately Logan McAllister attacks his, uh, his classmate in the form of David Whitehouse. Well, this changes further up the order though. Something's happened to Matthew Graham, has it? He's gone offline. 
some of our, our drivers in this top pack have uh, definitely been compromised because they've fallen right to the back of the pack. Yeah, Ross Steele has, uh, has fallen down a number of positions there. John Aidy might not believe what's going on here. He's up there in sixth place, but he's fully warranting that spot right now and he's on for some good points as we go towards the second half of the race. 11 and a half minutes down of the 25. Let's have a look at how it happened. Well, the 77 ran wide. 79 went right. It, it's all a little bit after you, sir, at the moment. Josh Ladders hopped through, gained two positions in all of that. It's all a lot more civil than I thought it was going to be, to be perfectly honest with you. Just a wide moment, but this is such a competitive pack uh, that that's all it takes, as Matthew Graham and Ross Deal, I think, remain side by side throughout that entire replay we just showed, and they're yes. still side by side. Very courteous of them to us to, uh, to keep that, uh, <laughs> keep the racing action going all the way through. Uh, heading down towards turn three, Ross Deal will be on the defence. Good drive, though, for Matthew Graham down the hill. Is he going to be able to do anything with it? He's going to try for the switch back there. Oh. oh, that's beautifully done on the up and under. On the inside of uh, of Symes Loop, as we're calling it, but he'll have the outside line for the S's. Ross Deal will just, but they're still side by side as they go through the right-hander, but Ross Deal will have the advantage to the next one. But better drive off the corner for Matthew Graham. This is proving brilliant for a good old dogfight here, Andrew. There might not be that many uh, places where, you know, you'd say that is a definitive overtaking opportunity, but it's, it's creating some fantastic battles in these Formula Ford cars. It really is. It's got the drivers thinking here tonight at Rutskergen. On lap number nine, 13 minutes gone, 12 to go. Murray Adams still leads, but that lead is coming down. It's down to 0.9 of a second. We look a little bit further back. This is the fight for 10th place, Logan McAllister two cadet champions in club 100 last year the youngest drivers in club 100 are up against one of the uh with the most experience over the years david whitehouse not racing at the moment in real life but having a good time here in the bukc i racing trophy he's got a good slipstream on logan McAllister. can he get it right on the brakes down the inside good use of the apex there Oh, both of them needed to give each other enough room to get round turn number two. They're still going to be side by side. It's going to be advantage to McAllister. But here comes Shawnee and Vines to attack as well. Four of them all going for the top ten here. And it, it, we've seen this around other circuits. Three wide. Course, three wide. Oh, that's going to be oh. very close. Near contact. In fact, I think there was a little bit of contact there between Shawnee and McAllister. McAllister did very well there to keep that one out of the wall. Yeah, I thought that was going to be... Uh, a sideways nose into the wall moment there for McAllister. I'm very impressed to see him still running. I'm sure he'll forget about that fairly quickly and immediately go, why am I, what have I lost three places? Um, that was an interesting one. All, all top. Lawrence Vines initially looked like he was going to sort of repeat what Logan did to him a few laps ago and read the situation really well, but he couldn't quite get the drive off the corner. And actually it was Matthew Shawnee who then came in and really seemed to benefit. I think it was like a, triple drag down the hill triple slipstream and then just went okay we'll go for it but it just got a little bit tight on the turn in for the the kink at turn number three but uh thankfully they do all uh live to race for another corner as it were situation at the front of the field lead is continuing to shrink for murray adams there it is some good pace from henry mckenzie friedman just behind just less than half a second be Behind the Scotsman now, Sam Sanders and Josh Ladd approaching as well. And that key battle for third place, because we are at that stage of the season now where we've got to start thinking about championship. Josh Ladd currently losing points here to Sam Sanders. Point system as a reminder, 50 points for a race win, 47 for second, 45 for third, and then a point less for each position, position down the order. So it is important here for Josh Ladd to find a way past Sam Sanders. He has had the best results, the best average results of anyone who's done more than three races so far. But those 20 bonus points for attending each round, Josh Ladd cannot get them now. He missed Laguna Seca, used some three of his four drop race scores across the course of the season. So he's still in contention for the title, but he's got to beat Sam Sanders in the remaining races to do so. 
trouble is at this distance now, what Murray Adams is basically doing is he's giving a sort of masterclass to everyone behind as to how he's driving this circuit. Because that gap's gone down, it's like, oh, here's the line I take, see if that works for you. And it just, you know, Henry Friedman is definitely close enough now that he can start to sort of eye up where things are, where he's doing things differently to Murray and, and where the opportunities may be for a pass. Murray just taking a slightly shallower line there down the hill through, uh, through Symes' loop. As the, they head back up through the S's. He's driving, still has to be said, Murray is driving so well at the moment. I mean, these the, the, the chaps behind him are really having to, uh, you know, they've had to, you know, put, su suppress the, the urge to fight within e themselves for a bit. Yeah, and they've really had to focus on getting on the pace and getting up onto the back of the, of the driver the number six. It's paid dividends for them, but Murray is making them work. Uh, you know, he's, he's keeping them on, as honest as they're trying to keep him, really. It, and I think as well, Murray is racing so efficiently right now. I say racing, he's driving efficiently so tidily. It's very tricky for uh, to, to pick out a point of where he's going to be overtaken here. He's getting his braking points absolutely spot on. He's getting his line spot on. Where did he pick for the move, especially when the three drivers behind him are all in contention for prizes at the end of the year? They've arguably got more to lose than Murray right now. James Havilland not too far behind uh, in the uh, in the side of the top five. That's has really closed in on Josh Ladd that time around. And I think as well, Murray's done his research here. He knows how to defend around this track as well. We yes. saw that in the early yes. stages. We're going to see it again here, going down the hill towards, as we're calling it tonight, Symes Loop. It's continuing to hold on to the lead. Sam Sanders trying to find a way through there as well. Josh Ladd in fourth. The other situation for Josh Ladd in terms of championship, he knows as well if he's going to find a way through past Sam Sanders, it's got to be clean. It's got to be whistle clean because he's yeah. got to get his points on the board, having used three of his drop scores uh, with a with an absent round at Laguna Seca. Absolutely. And it's a really good point about how Murray's positioning his car defensively. You know, whenever people are learning a circuit, yes, you've got to learn how to drive the racing line, how to how to hot lap well. well. What's the next stage? Next, you want to be looking at your defensive lines going off the line through a corner, so that you're prepared for when you're going into a battle with somebody. And uh, that's the that's the element that Murray is really bringing to the table right now, and it's allowing him to absorb this pressure and. Uh, position his car such that it's really hard for Henry to prise open the door at the moment. Is indeed. The rest of them just holding firm right now. Six minutes remaining in this one. Still Adams. Mackenzie Friedman, Sanders, Ladd, de Havilland. That is your top five. John Aidy continuing brilliantly there in sixth place. He's yeah. put a good amount of time in to train ahead of this event. Remember, no, no setups in this one. No trick paid setups and finding uh, performance that way you've got to put the practice in you've got to get the lap time out with the fix set up that everybody's got and John Aidy is doing just that right now on board with Sam Sanders Henry McKenzie Friedman just ahead Murray Adams continuing to hold on to this lead which he has done pretty much every lap from the start of this race did lose out to uh, Henry McKenzie Friedman around lap four, but then a mistake from the number 55 allowed him back through. He's going to defend again down into the hairpin. This is a super drive, but we've seen some good drives, Howard, from Murray Adams over the past couple of years in Club and Sim Racing Championships. The winner of the, uh, the second class, class two, last year in the main championship, stick to the championship overall, hence why he's got that number six but I'm gonna say it I think this is his best drive to date Ooh. oh there was a back marker there out of control that uh, may well have been a scary moment I think it's Richard Sanders who's, I think it is, uh, yeah. who's who is circulating is some 10 12 laps down my, oh my, that will have been a heart in mouth moment for uh, Murray Allen well this is let's have a look at what happens to Sanders senior is gonna lose it on the curb perhaps yet yeah, just over rotate very easy to pitch these cars around. It's parked right there on the apex and just manages to get off circuit. Wisely done to allow the rest of the field through. Yeah, and fair play to Richard. He did try and get himself out of the way there. Um, I think just uh, 
Having a bit of time, it's, it's fair to say, I mean, I'm not... We're being treated to a fantastic battle at the front. I'm not trying to highlight, but there are some drivers who are... You know, we mentioned that some drivers are finding it difficult to make friends with this track, and there are a few spins going on uh, throughout the order, but fair, fair play to Richard trying to get himself uh, out of the way of the leaders. As this is still the battle going on between uh, Logan McAllister and Lawrence Vines. Uh, you can see that David Whitehouse uh, and Matthew Shawnee have, have just been able to get a bit of a gap on these two. Uh, so it's back to these two fighting the way they have swapped position a couple of times over 12. So our, uh, there is a... By the standards of the championship so far, there's a fairly substantial amount of field spread generally. That's a relative statement to what we've seen throughout the year. Um, but still some good battles going on throughout the field. Indeed. So three minutes to go. And still, Murray Adams holds the lead of this race. This is reminding me of races that sometimes we've had around Flandau in real life, mate, eh? of, of where it's, it's, it's almost that thing of, no, after you, after you. We're waiting for someone to make a dive here to really break this uh, oh, group apart. It might be right on cue. Sam Sanders down the inside of Henry Mackenzie Friedman. Sam Sanders has had enough of sitting there in third place waiting for Henry to make a move, but can't find a way through himself. Yeah, that was a really good earnest attempt there from San Sanders, had the run down the hill, and, and tried to fire one down the inside, but just could not make it stick. Really hard to convert the attempt into James de Havilland has a go to the hairpin Whoa. on Josh Ladd. How's the drive off the corner going to be? It's the left-hander of Paddock coming up next, as we're calling it tonight. And once again, Josh Ladd able to, to hold on to that position. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it allows you this trap to have a go without too much penalty. But actually, the conversion rate on the overtaking attempts is got to be the lowest of uh, any trap that we've seen so far this season. Very it's really is a bit of a challenge. Very tricky to convert. Mm opportunities round uh, round this circuit so time remaining on the clock I think we'll get two more laps in here so no, the last lap board has not come out yet for the drivers Murray Adams continues to lead this race this will be a huge step forward for Murray Adams in the uh, in the Clubman championship in the championship overall as well Gunasaka was very much Murray Adams back on four. For Mackenzie Friedman, Sanders, Ladd and de Havilland. Is there going to be another opportunity for points here? Let's see how difficult it is through the S's there. Ladd doing very well to get the car back on line and not offer too much of an opportunity to de Havilland to get through. Adams under attack again. Mackenzie Freeman trying to go around the outside. That one's not going to work, but is this the opening now? Oh, there's contact between the two of them. They're both off, off the road. Sam Sanders is going to try and go around the outside and take the lead. He has to take the lead. Murray Adams slings it back down the inside. He spins. Spins out of control. Everybody avoids him. On the grass there is Henry Mackenzie Freeman. Josh Ladd has nipped through. James de Havilland's into second place. Ten seconds to go on the clock. Are we going to get another lap in here? I think we are. Just, are we? Eight, nine, 25 minutes on. Yes, we did. Sam Sanders got over the line before 25 minutes on the clock. So we go for one more. And Freeman, oh, Freeman has a moment as well. Your top two for so long in this race. I was about to say your heart goes out to, uh, to Murray Adams. Ironically, the two of them here now side by side. They are indeed, there's going to be words about that one afterwards, you would think, but for Sam Sanders now, three quarters of a second, that's Eric Minion just pulling over to one side, letting the field go through. Eric is at least one lap down at the moment, but for Sam Sanders leading the championship, is this going to be another win for him here? It's been superb so far this season, has had one race win, a good number of seconds and thirds, but this could be the most important one yet. Leaders coming down into the hairpin now. Here is Henry Mackenzie Freeman, who spent the vast majority of this race looking at the rear axle of Murray Adams. Let's have a look at it again. 
So this was the moment between the two of them coming back up the hill. Just a locking of wheels, both of them running wide. Sam Sanders round the outside. And now there was the spin for Murray Adams in trying to make uh, the move again. Just too much speed. Car over rotated. But Sam Sanders is going to take the first victory of the night. A second of the season in the BUKCI Racing Trophy. James to Havlin P2. Josh Ladd P3. Fourth for Ross Steele. Fifth. Fifth place for John Aidy. What a performance. Yeah, brilliant stuff from John Aidy. Murray Adams comes home in sixth ahead of Henry Friedman. You've got to feel for both of those drivers a little bit. It was actually very mild contact uh, between them off that hairpin, wasn't it? Uh, it is a difficult one. Perhaps a bit controversial, but uh, yeah, just the slightest little nibble at each other and it allowed Sam Sanders through. And then, um, well, it's easy, easy for me to say from the comfort of my comms position, but then... Uh, yeah, Murray went for the, the, the counter-attack to try and get the place back into the left-hander, and it just he just lost it on the in, on the inside, maybe on the curbing slightly. Uh, Hart goes out to him, but he's got two more goes at uh, trying to get him. He'll have the eye, his eyes set on a win now, Andrew, after after coming so close. Yeah, he, he will do. He's definitely got uh, a good amount of race pace tonight, uh, but we'll start the next one from sixth. Uh, good evening to Matt Salmon, uh, who's, who's forgot about racing tonight. Oh, no, Matt. Oh, dear. Well, we've got uh, another one in a few weeks' time uh, at Virginia International Raceway. I hope to see you there. And stick around in the uh, in the comments in the chat as well. Here's your grid for race number two, then. Sam Sanders, pole position, virtue of winning race one. James Havland alongside on the front row. Josh Ladd and Ross Steele on row two. John Ady and Murray Adams row three. Henry McKenzie Friedman and Matthew Graham on row four. George Palazzi had a bit of a lonely race there to P9 and starts this one uh, from that same position on row five. David Whitehouse alongside to complete the top ten at the start of this one. Logan McAllister uh, worked well from the back in race one, starts this second race from row six and is joined uh, by Matthew Shawnee. Uh, Lawrence Fines is next up alongside Alava Castro on row seven. Simon Delamere and James Fremont on row eight. Sam Dimolo and Matt Hale on row nine. Tom Holland and Eric Mignon on row ten. And then Richard Sanders uh, to uh, complete the order. So the field waiting for the instructions to head off. I think we've got 20 cars out there on circuit. Howard, Tom Holland has just uh, withdrawn to the pit lane. Hopefully we'll be able to get back on circuit shortly. Uh, but for Sam Sanders, that's a, that's a big haul of 50 points. Tops up his tally to six, uh, 461 now. This is a great opportunity for him to, uh, to further capitalise. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, really put himself in a, a good position championship-wise. Um, Josh Ladd, though, worked his way up. Didn't he? he worked his way up well. He's not the lowest place prem anymore. So um, one might be one to watch here off at the start. And, and Murray Adams as well, you've got to say. We've got uh, uh, our, our top, uh, well, they're not actually up tenth in the same row of the grid, but starting sixth and seventh in this race. The two drivers who started first and second in race one. It's, it's going to be an interesting race start, this one, Andrew. It is indeed. Uh, we'll try and keep you. Uh, up to date with the scores as they are. I wonder if some of the drivers, for example, in the case of Tom Holland, I wonder if there are going to be drivers who elect to do pit lane starts. Possibly. But, uh, just to give themselves uh, a nice ease into the race. This is uh, this is the smoke about the box from the title. disadvantage I suppose of doing a pit lane start you've got to ease your tyres in gradually over the first few laps this is where the controversial moment, dramatic moment I'll say happened uh, towards the end of that last race coming out of the hairpin we for the next 25 minutes we'll come around this final golf club section Driver section, golf driver section. Not sure what we call it. 
answers on the chat what you'd like this to be called. Right now, we're going to turn our attentions to Sam Sanders, who's going to lead the field out of the final corner over the start line and begin the second race of the evening as they head towards turn number one. Bit more of an even start. It's almost three wide between Sanders, Ladd and de Havilland, and it's a good start from Ladd to get from third up into second. He has a bit of a twitch on the rear, though, there, I think, does Josh Ladd, and does well to uh, regain control of that and not allow James de Havilland through, although de Havilland will be on the inside as they come down the hill. Delighted to say, and once again, I can't see anyone who's had too dramatic a moment there as they all come down the hill for the first time in this race as Ross Deal is having a look at James de Havilland there side by side. We saw in race one how that's not a done deal. He will have the job done, though. That was nice by Ross Deal to get himself up to third ahead of James de Havilland. Murray Adams, who led so long uh, in that first race, uh, has held station in now, uh, for, for now off the start in sixth place. Half victory off the start is to not lose places. As uh, Anthony Graham now starts to have a look at James de Havilland. But it's a good start for Sam Sanders at the end of the field, albeit Josh Ladd is not letting him get away with this one early doors. Yeah, absolutely. I just wonder, our driver's going to be a bit more aggressive in this one, knowing that they need to be forceful with the moves. Can't uh, take this one too shyly saw in race number one that's uh, John Ady having a fight with George Pelosi for eighth place and Matthew Shortley being uh, in close proximity as well Karen's a lot of yeah yes they are uh, now two rookies uh, running together there in John Ady and Matthew Shortley although as I say that John Ady definitely having a go back at George Pelosi if there's anything going there uh, David Whitehouse and Logan McAllister battling as well as a resumption really of that battle in the uh, Sort of low t low team positions there. White House, McAllister, Vines, and the drivers who were uh, battling away for those positions in the earlier race. Oh. Murray Adams, yeah, that's Matthew Graham, and Murray Adams is round as well. Oh, and a second race there ends for Murray Adams, or is seriously compromised, I should say, uh, by Murray Adams for uh, not facing the the right way. Um, uh, um, or a moment of not facing the right way, and he's, he'll be gutted off the back of that. Yeah, it's all gone from... Uh, he goes so well earlier in these races. It's being another compromised night for Murray Adams. He's going to have to fight his way back through this field now. 18th, 18th out of 21. Tom Holland has got going again, but is a lap down. Noted by, uh, by the blue details there. Oh, nice move there. Murray Adams right on the outside of Eric Mignon. Well, that's one. He's got to find another 16 more now to get himself back up to where he was at the start of the majority of the first race. Let's have a look at it again. So this is down the hill into Simon Street. Oh, is there a little bit of a loss at the back end there? Difficult to say uh, who was at fault from that angle. Two drivers going for the corner hard. Oh, James Fremont was also off in the background, yeah. I think, in the, uh, in the black and yellow car. Yeah, difficult to say, I think, for that one, from that angle, Howard. You know, two court, two, two drivers both going hard for the corner. A, a corner that is difficult to get the car slowed down in because you're going downhill, all the way going to the front of the uh, of the car. Could go down as a racing incident. This is another look on board. Oh, yeah, a bit of a lock in between the two of them. Yeah, both of them. That's one. Massively compromised their uh, their stories in fact has uh, Murray Adams now got ahead of Matthew Graham there was another car up in the background there in fact is that Matthew Graham has Matthew Graham, Graham got some form of problem he's very slow and the 77 is the uh, there's damage there's damage on the front right yep. of that number 77 more problems well the speed has been there this year so far for Matthew Graham but bad luck seems to strike the number 77 and has done so again here. Matthew Shawnee jumped to the pit. Related? He went off the track. I'm trying to find if he. That was very odd. Did he have contact? Well, that, yeah, the damage has already been done at that point before the uh, before the cut through the chicane. We have seen this happen with the FF 1600. That uh, the prior contact, prior incident. At first, everything has seemed okay, and then the mechanical failure has happened later. Now, that's the spin 
Oh, now, now that could be more significant. There was a touch there between the two carrots. So John Aidy yeah. and Matthew Shawnee both involved. The damage was done there. So the, dam the damage yeah. is present on the number 77 at that point there. Yeah, and, and all then three he of them are out. Yeah. My goodness me. Yeah, I saw that Matt Shawnee uh, went to the pits. But yeah, it's impacted, unfortunately, himself, John Aidy. So our top two running uh, rookie class uh, runners until that point. Uh, and Matthew Graham. Matthew Drama Graham, then. Matthew Graham will score points for this yep. race because he's completed two racing laps. Meanwhile, at the front of the order, another big story. Josh Ladd is down to ninth place. Now, what has happened here? This is a replay into the John Cleland complex. Is there contact? Is there a spin? No. There's a spin, a mistake from Josh Ladd in the virtual world. You don't often see that occur. And how key is that now? Because Josh Ladd is down in ninth place. We talked at the start of the night about him needing to beat Sam Sanders in races remaining in the season to overcome the 20 point deficit, but not being present at all the round. Assuming that Sam Sanders attends the, uh, the Virginia Internet International Raceway round of course and is now down in ninth place with the same driver he's competing in the championship for up front and clear by two seconds and, and clear by two seconds is key because this is the battle going on behind him they're not cooperating we're on board with Ross still trying to find a move on James de Havilland being very bold through the S's he's made it work you know that's a beautiful opportunistic move there from Ross deal one of several we've seen this evening uh, but what this is doing, I mean, the gap's already gone out to the start of this lap at two seconds. It's now 2.4, Andrew, as uh, Sam Sanders begins lapping some traffic. Uh, this is all playing very nicely into the hands of Sam Sanders. Should note that Josh Ladd has got another drop score in his back pocket. Used three of the four up, of course. This would be his worst race finish of the season so far for this round, fifth was the worst result for the Cardiff University driver. Scores so far this season of a win, a win, a third, a fifth, and then another two wins. But Josh Ladd, if he wants that, uh, that entry at no extra cost through to the Club 100 Sim Racing Championships, the main, main, main I Racing Championship later in the year, he's got to find a way past eight drivers on a difficult circuit to overtake on. I mean, I know we've we've spoken superlatives over the year regards Josh Ladd's Howard, but I think even for him, this this is a very tall order. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how, how often have you and I said, and Josh Ladd spins of his own accord? Uh, you know, really, really unusual. This is a lovely little movie he's putting in though on Lawrence Vines. And that's up into into eighth place. And he needs to be making bold moves like that if he's going to bring himself back into play here. Yeah, this is uh, this is uncharted territory in many ways for Josh. Well, he's, he's picked his way. Let's be clear here. We've done reverse grid races in uh, in the various forms of Club 100 by racing championships, where he has had to pick his way up through the field. So he's no stranger to that. But. Um, for us to see him in this position off the back of an incident like that is highly unusual. Indeed. So, nine minutes gone, 14 remaining. Lead gap is 1.9 seconds in reducing between Sanders and, uh, and Friedman. Here's the chasing duo of Deal and de Havilland, not too far behind either. George Belotti is having a decent race here, and I, I really hope I'm not putting the curses on George there done that a couple of times this season but up there in fifth place lead clubman right now the uh, former southampton bukc driver let's have a look at a, a replay this is of alavo castro this is going down into science loop and that's car looping itself around very easily done and deep into the gravel there showing how much speed you're carrying the rear getting unweighted there and uh, overtaking its driver.
Ross Steele continuing to work at times here with James de Havilland, trying to catch up to Henry McKenzie Breeden. Uh, that, that gap is coming down now, isn't it, at the very front? It, it, it is indeed, it is indeed. We, they're they're, they're realising, I think, that they're going to have to take this challenge back to Sam Sanders and, and as much as they can, although they're more spread out than they were in race one, work together. Just to be clear, the reason I show Alavo's incident there is not to call him out on the spin. Tim Haviland's going to have a look at Ross Steele for third into turn one. This isn't working together, just in case people were wondering. There's a little bit of a tap there, maybe, between the rear left of Dill and the front right of De Havilland. Uh, but just to get the thought out, the reason I show Castro's spin, he was, after the incidents for Aidy and Shawnee, the highest running rookie. Uh, now Simon Delamere, who's the highest running rookie, and he's doing it, Andrew, by keeping it clean out there. A side by side down the hill between Deal and De Havilland. Deal will surely just hold the inside line, but De Havilland is nipping away. I keep, keep using these terms like, you know, nipping away, having a bit of a nibble. That's kind of what you have to do. Clearly, that's the going, uh, the going currency around this uh, this circuit. Um, it's sort of the nature of it. You've got to start to just, you know, have, have a little bit of a go at your your rival ahead. See if they can make, see if they make a mistake. Um, that's the that seems to be the nature of uh, the racing round here at uh, at Ruskirk. Indeed, uh, I do think Matthew Graham has retired from this race. Uh, yeah, but to say we'll we'll score points for twenty first. But fortunately for uh, Matthew Graham. That's, uh, I think that takes him out of contention. Oh, as there's a spin there for David Whitehouse. David Whitehouse falling down the order. And loses position to Lawrence Vines and Murray Adams. Was ahead of Josh Ladd. Let's have a look what caused the incident. Well, Josh Ladd is already through at that point. Is he? No, he's not. That's close to McAllister directly ahead. Oh, loses it on the curb. Loses it on the curb. Oh, Josh Ladd, Josh Ladd does very, everybody does very well to avoid each other at that point. Well, look, we saw we saw Murray Adams having a very similar incident, albeit it was whilst trying to, trying to execute a pass, counter, counter pass, one might say, in the first race. But it's, it's happened to the best of them out there, Andrew. Yep. It's something you and I predicted a little bit before we came on tonight as, uh, oh, is there a moment out there for Ross Deal? Uh, there is. Ross Deal's oh. round. Ross Steele facing the wrong way. Another one of the Premiers has had a spin. Down into uh, into Syme Sweep. Is this just driver going on their own? Yes, it is. Too much speed for the Welshman. And round he goes. Is there going to be a second contact here? I think there might be. Who's that coming upon him? Is that... Uh, yeah, George was that uh, second contact with Palozzi? Just the lightest of kisses. I can't, I can't believe uh, there has to have been some contact there, Andrew. I can't believe that Deal lost it. He wasn't going that fast. He was still recovering. But, um, well, uh, it happened before I could even get the full thought out. You and I were predicting, Andrew, before we came on tonight, this might be a night where, you know, the circuit in of itself is, is a challenge. And, yep. you know, those at the very front tonight might be struggling. That's, that's exactly what we are seeing. It is... Clearly, no mean feat to get these uh, Ford, uh, Formula Ford cars around this. Uh, well, this this, uh, this challenge of a circuit, Norway's premier motorsports uh, location, or I should say, hang on, I should say asphalt track or, or yes. something, shouldn't I? Because I'm sure you know Nor Norway being a, a nation of rally and rally cross, <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some other candidates for for premium uh, premier. So, somewhere the uh, somewhere the FWRC. Mob led by yes. Tom Banks and James Waller and Kieran Fitzgerald are cursing your name, Mr. Bishop. I'm sure they are, yes. <laughs> uh, there's the battle for the lead. Sanders is now half a second ahead of Henry McKenzie Friedman. Right, so it's take two for Henry McKenzie Friedman, who's in exactly the same position in the first race, that time against Murray Adams. Here is Murray Adams fighting with Josh Ladd now. Every single spot now for Josh Ladd is crucial, you would feel. This is Ladd down the inside for sixth place. Has he found a way through? Well, he's not got it complete yet. It's going to be side by side once again towards Paddock Corner. Switchback attempt by Josh Ladd. He needs to be careful. He is doing so. And Murray Adams again holds on. Yeah, I mean, Murray Adams, I think, is a little bit... Uh, well, obviously, there was the disappointment in race one. And, and perhaps there'll be a bit of, frust of frustration that this one's got away from him in terms of uh, forming a part of that, that top pack. 
uh, in this uh, latter half of the race. This is not Josh Ladd just picking his way through uh, cars effortlessly here. This is a challenge for him. And Murray Adams is no easy prey around this Rudskogen circuit, as we've seen. Changed for the lead. Henry Mackenzie Friedman has got past Sam Sanders. A really good lap time last time around. A new fastest lap of the race, 127.2. And he's found a way through past Sam Sanders in the early stages of this lap. Let's have a look at a replay of how he did it. It was down the hill into turn four, into Symes loop, as we're calling it tonight. Pretty straightforward move, that Howard. Friedman to the lead. Yeah, looking at that, you wouldn't have believed that he's uh, he spent most of the race building up to that, but consider that the gap at one point was out to, what was it, two and a half, best, best part of three seconds there to Sam Sanders, and, and fair play to Henry Friedman. He's managed to reel that one in and uh, make a really nice clean pass there through uh, through Simon's loop. So impressive stuff. And he hold on to it, was in the lead for about a lap in race number one. And, uh, then had an error which allowed Murray Adams back through. This is Alavo Castro. This is the fight for the rookie leader. It is. Simon Delamere just ahead in the, uh, in the red, black and White, the uh, uh, we're still calling it the, like the advanced Club 100 stock livery. Yes, thank you to uh, Chris, uh, Chris Simpson for providing us with that one, and then uh, a few tweaks just to make it eligible for the uh, the roll hoop colours and uh, such like. And Lavo Castro in the very standard stock livery you know, oh. took all of about 10 minutes to make. Uh, but 17 minutes to go in this one. Oh, a good night so far for Simon Delamere. Strong performance there in 12. It is. We're picking up in a moment of pressure, though. The reason these two are together is because Delamere had some kind of spin on the previous lap. Um, and that's why these two, so both of these drivers at the front of the rookie runners, have had some form of incident out there. It's, it's not been an entirely clean run for either of them. But nevertheless, as you say, Andrew, really nice drive from Simon, Simon Delamere has kept it, for the most part, clean. And, uh, and that's why he finds himself uh, at the head of the rookie field, but he's having to absorb a lot of pressure now from Alavo Castro behind. This could be an interesting one going forward. Castro clearly wants to have a go and a move here. But uh, as we've seen for so many this evening, oh! and he's won, oh, that's a moment for Delamere, and that will allow Castro through. Just got a little bit, a uh, little bit of a, an oversteer moment. The rear tried to get round on him, and. and he did well to gather that up, but uh, it was enough to compromise his run off that corner and, and allow Castro and indeed Dimolo through. Yeah, did very well to hold on to it, but loses two spots as a result. Back with the battle for sixth place, still Murray Adams ahead of Josh Ladd. Four seconds is the gap up to Logan McAllister. And, and this is the problem for Josh Ladd, that right now he's, uh, he's losing an opportunity to at least match his worst race finish of the year so far. By I mean, two he's, he's positions. Run, he's running behind, I think, the hardest person to catch, uh, to pass, sorry, on this track tonight. Yes. You know, Murray did so well. Yes, it, it all went a little bit pear shaped at the end. As this is a good look from Josh Ladd. He's found the gap, but it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen Murray keep his foot in it round this Rudd's Coke at the circuit tonight. But that is a long enough left hander uh, that uh, Josh Ladd gets his nose in front. Still side by side, though, heading towards the hairpin. How's this one going to shake out? Murray Adams is going to try and go down the inside. Josh Ladd leaves in the room. Josh Ladd leaves a lot of room. Josh Ladd leaves too much room, I would argue. And Murray Adams holds on to the position. Brilliant stuff once again. And Josh Ladd tries to force that one round the outside with a bit of drifting, but again, just not able to get the line and get the, get the speed off the corner. That seems to be Murray's strength so far tonight, is getting good exits off of the uh, off the slow corners of the medium speed and all those traction zones. Can he hold off Josh Ladd here? He's quite happy for drivers to go down the inside. Let's see if he can do the same trick again. Round the outside onto the inside now for turn number two. Josh Ladd will try and get the corner exit. As a kind of drive around Murray Adams there. Down the hill they go once again towards Symes Loop. This is where Murray Adams had the contact early on in the race with Matthew Graham. 
side by side between the two of them once more. Josh Ladd trying to hold himself in there. If he can hold his line on the for the next corner, he'll have the inside. This might be the key moment for Josh Ladd. Murray Adams just does not know when he is beat here this evening. He's going to try and hold it around the outside once again through the apricot corner. But I think this time, surely Josh Ladd has the position he'll have to defend as they go down the hill into the hairpin. Adams is going to have a go around the outside. It's rolled reversed for one lap and go, oh, nearly locking wheels. Is Murray Adams still there on the inside? He is still he there is. on the inside. And he comes back through again. Josh Ladd must be fuming in his helmet because he cannot find a way through. That's fantastic. I mean, the reason why Murray Adams doesn't uh, know that he's beat is because nobody knows that he is. He's doing so well here, battling away. He's just not going to quit this one. I mean, he's got nothing to lose. The gap up to, to Logan McAllister ahead, that, that, that's, that's, that's done pending, uh, aside from many incidents. Um, so this time, roll reversal, lad on the outside. He's going to position himself exactly as Murray did a lap ago. And is that going to give him a way through? Yes, it is. Lawrence Vines, with all this battling, has been able to catch up as well. So there's opportunity for him. David Whitehouse isn't too far back either. This is fantastic stuff. Can Murray Adams go down the inside? He's ahead. He's ahead as they go into three. They're side by side once again here at the bottom of the hill. Once again, Josh Ladd's got to keep his line in. Is he a little bit of a long side, bit further alongside this time? Tries to hold it, uses all of the track width and a little bit more of the inside. Has this time Josh Ladd done enough? I don't think he has. I don't think he has <laughs> done enough because Murray Adams is still getting that in, in just enough of an overlap to keep himself in the discussion once again off the corner gets down the hill will be on the inside this time for the hairpin here comes Lawrence Vines onto the scene this is brilliant stuff Murray Adams putting on a defensive clinic right now to keep one of the fastest drivers not just in this championship but on iRacing as a whole. This is a driver who won the Sebring 12-hour special event at the weekend, and he cannot find a way past the Scotsman. Absolutely brilliant stuff. I, don't, I very rarely, Andrew, try to invoke uh, or, or bring in the iRating. This, just for context, is a 2.7K iRating I -rated driver, defending fantastically against a, a 95 I rated driver. I mean, this is brilliant, brilliant stuff here from Murray Adams. But he's got the car underneath him. He knows the track. He knows exactly where to position his car. He's got the confidence and he's probably got a bit of fire in his belly as well after things haven't completely gone his way this evening. Oh! And this is brilliant stuff, but there's contact. Oh! And it's going to compromise both of them. And that's again another moment where your heart goes out to, to Murray Adams. Both, both are affected though. And Josh Ladd wants to get Andrew. He has his second major incident of this race. Yeah, it's not been the kind of race that Josh Ladd would have expected. He's now dealing with Ross Deal. Well, that is a controversial moment. Ross Deal now looking down the inside of Josh Ladd. That's a beautiful move. That is a beautiful oh. move from Ross Deal back up to eighth place. I know it ended in contact, but I still would want to submit that for a, a nomination for the back of the season. That was absolutely fantastic for so long. Oh. Josh Ladd is trying to come back at this one. So impressed that there wasn't contact there, there between the, the two of them. But Ross Steele's managed to hold on for now. Blimey, this, this has provided some good battles tonight. I have to say, it's a little bit, you know, that... Uh, Josh Ladd will position himself around the outside of one, have the inside for two. We've seen this one a number of times. But if Ross Deal can get good drive off the corner, he might have the drive and he's going to try and switch back to the inside as he gets a little twitch on as he tries it. No, he's going to stick with the outside as they go down the hill. They're almost touching once again, leaning on the cars through three. Are they both going to keep them pointing the right way? Give themselves plenty of racing room. I, I tell you what, Andrew, tonight, and Josh Ladd's on the gravel. That's going to compromise him through the S's. We've seen Ross Deal be strong through the S's. And he's going to try to hang it around the outside here. And uh, that's going to be a little bit careful. That was almost a, a bit of a corner cut there. 
goodness me, the battling tonight, Andrew. I have to say, this is uh, this is one of those situations where it's not the number of successful passes in the race. You know, the number of overtakes doesn't tell the whole story. I'm going to avoid getting on a DRS soapbox. But the number of passes doesn't tell the story. It's, it's the nature of the battles that, uh, that really makes the race. It really does. We're on to the final lap of the race for... Henry Mackenzie Friedman and well this isn't it's done either because Sam Sanders is right there and there's potentially traffic for the leaders to deal with as well that's uh, that's wisely dri uh, driven there I think that was Tom Holland's just uh, getting out of the way in the Warwick Motorsports car but for Sam Sanders can he find a way through it, it, this is so tempting for him because this is a big opportunity with Josh Land further down the order this could be the critical strike in terms of the championship for Sam Sanders, but you do not want to risk what would still be a very good 47-point score for second. Absolutely, yeah, it's, uh, it's the inner racer versus the, uh, the, the uh, tactician who's got one eye on the championship. That's one of the major overtaking opportunities gone. Just a couple more corners now, really, through this left-hander and heading towards this uh, final complex going to be uh, I think that's uh, that's it for Friedman as he's going to now push for the line well what a race what a race and it could be a very key one in the 15 race series for the BUK CI racing trophy Henry McKenzie Friedman takes another win it's his third of the season was there a problem there for George Pelozzi I think there was it's going to come across the line in fifth but it's Henry McKenzie Friedman who takes it, Sam Sanders second, James de Havilland third, Logan McAllister fourth, fifth for George Pelozzi, Friedman the top, McKenzie Friedman the top prem, top clubman is George Pelozzi, top inter is James de Havilland. It's going to be a Lavo Castro across the line as the top rookie, but the big story in this race, we feel, Howard, it's got to be Josh Ladd down there in ninth. Yeah, from a, how rare it is, and from a, how this is a, this is from the last lap, by the way. George Pelotzi, I think that's Logan McAllister behind us. And yeah, oh, oh, there's a bit of contact on the rear there, and that's going to be gutting for Pelotzi. He was at least able to hold on to. In fact, I don't think he lost any position there either. Uh, he um, lost one position to to. Oh, he uh, lost one. Okay. To McAllister himself. Uh, oh yeah, well yes, of course. Sorry, yeah, there is that. Um, but uh, still managed to hold on to the highest place clubman. Yes. Off the back of that. But yeah, uh, in terms of rarity of the event for Josh Ladd, and in terms of, of the implications it might have on the championship, yes, totally agree, mate. That uh, th that's uh, a significant moment there in the championship uh, for for Josh Ladd, and, and probably not in the way that he'd like it uh, like us to mean it. Indeed, we're going to take a short break here on the commentary, show you what we've uh, got in store for the coming weeks and months here in uh, DDMM Commentary World. We'll be back shortly with more coverage. Race three coming right up. <laughs>
Welcome back, everybody, to live coverage of round four of this year's BUKC I Racing Trophy. Uh, racing here tonight at uh, Rudd's Kurgan. Uh, what a night it has been. Controversial at times, very dramatic, with some great racing uh, along the way. Andrew Mather and uh, Howard Mitchell in the virtual DDMM comms box for you. Uh, one race to go here tonight, mate, and... Uh, well, this could be another key one in terms of the championship. We've, we're now at the stage, effectively, that anyone who's done every single race so far has got a championship representative score. Yes. And uh, from now on in, it is now, right, trying to improve and beat results that you've had prior to this race. Yeah, it's what we all often talk about uh, in pretty much all forms of club on racing because drop scores play a, a key role uh, across uh, the... Uh, 100 portfolio um you're you're racing against your former self <laughs> effectively uh, at all times obviously you're racing against uh, a field of other competitors as well but uh yeah you're you're now in a sort of qualifying situation you want to you want your next score to qualify as one of your championship standings by being better than your worst one so far yes um so um uh it's uh, a key aspect of, of that, and yeah, it's, it's all got a. It's got a, in, in a good way. I mean, it's, it's got it's got quite serious. I think we all came into tonight as sort of, oh yeah, a bit of a new circuit for us here. Some of the drivers finding it a bit tricky. It's like no, this 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 is having a bearing here, on uh, on uh, potentially quite significantly on uh, on championship. It is indeed. Uh, we'll try and keep you up to date with the uh, with all of the points as they come in. Uh, uh, this is this is going to be uh, a key one. I'm, I'm going to let you do the grid, Howard, for this one whilst I uh, tally up those points. How are, how's, how are we looking for the order of this one? Indeed. I can't mess up the timing of it if I'm doing it. Henry Friedman on pole with Sam Sanders alongside. James de Havilland and Logan McAllister uh, make it an all-intermediate second row. George Palozzi and David Whitehouse are third on the grid. Palozzi the highest place of the clubmans, but he's got Lawrence Vines behind him on row four for company and Ross Deal lines up alongside him. Josh Ladd, uh, I'm sure, will be delighted to resume uh, battling with uh, Ross Deal uh, starting there on row number five. Uh, and so is uh, Murray Adams as well, starting uh, round rounding out that top ten. And, and goodness me, he is going to want to salvage something uh, respectable from uh, from this one. I think he's been so close to some amazing results tonight. Robert Castro, your first new rookie runners, they're starting in 11th with that black number board to indicate that. Sam Dimolo alongside. Good uh, good work by Sam there, I think, to get the result at the end of that race, at uh, the second race. Uh, Simon Delamere and James Fremont are on row 7. Matt Hale and John Aidy on row 8. Tom Holland, uh, who, a bit of a shout out there, for our, I think, race 2 there. I think he did start a bit late, just worked himself. Uh, played himself into it, ended up finishing fourth of the rookie runners in that one. So fair play to Tom. He's on uh, row nine with Matthew Shawnee alongside. Eric Mignon and Richard Sanders are your tenth row. And Matthew Graham has been all to do from 21st on the grid, back of the grid. And it's going to be a difficult ask for the driver for number 77, but it's going to be highly entertaining to see how he gets on trying to navigate his way through the Absolutely. So uh, these are very provisional scores. Sam Sanders leads on 508 uh, up to uh, Ross Deal on 480. James Hamlin 455. Henry Mackenzie Friedman 449. Key one that I'm just going to flag. Josh Ladd 372 scored. A max possible 533. The Sam Sanders, he's trying to improve on a sixth place. That's his worst result right now. So if he was to improve that one by a, by a margin, he could be moving himself closer to that 5.33. Josh Ladd still has a good mathematical chance of doing this, but this is another key one. He cannot afford to be dropping 10, 15 points again in this uh, next 25 minutes. Board no, with really Simon Delamere, just going through and into the final chicane. Looks like we're good for the start, Howard. 
Yeah, indeed, as you say, mate, we can't afford to, well, no one can really afford to have a moment for Josh Ladd. This needs to be a good race. Henry Friedman, though, would like a good race. He's going to take this one away from pole position. Away they go, then, for race number three, the final race of round four. Heading towards turn one. It's a good start for Mackenzie Friedman. Uh, and James de Havilland has immediately got himself up into second place. As does it all stay clean through turn number one? We've got side by side. Uh, is that a moment there for Josh Landon? Twitch, maybe, as he's in the middle of a three wide battle through turns one and two. But once again, it looks to me like everyone's pointing the right way as they head down the hill for the first time. We've got, uh, at least by my reckoning, uh, someone blinking in the middle of the pack, which is not what you'll be wanting in the early stages of this race. But it's Henry Friedman still leading them through turn four. A great start from de Havilland up to second. Sam Sanders in third. There's an incident for Eric Mignon at the back, but uh, on the whole, a pretty clean start there. Not too many passes. Uh, once again, we've seen several other races tonight. Drivers just easing their way into this one relative to what we see uh, at, at other points. Oh, I think it's uh, Logan McAllister who's, uh, who's yeah, blinking it, there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, uh, I think that's, drivers are finding it difficult to navigate. You saw Josh Ladd giving him a lot of room there. I think that's, uh, that's proving a challenge for the drivers. At the end of lap one, though, Henry Friedman ends lap one, where he uh, ended the last lap of race two. But uh, de Havilland is keeping him honest early doors. Sam Sanders in third, George Pelotzi in fourth. Good start from him. To, to make progress there on the field. Ross Deal as well uh, in fifth as well. So some drivers were making some uh, positive moves on the field there on lap number one. They were indeed down into the second breaking zone. Looking a bit further back, this is the club and battle between Murray Adams on the inside there and Lawrence Vines on the outside. This is for 10th place. George Pelosi a good way up the road at the moment in fourth. This is a strong opportunity for George Pelosi to pull himself back in the point standings, especially over Murray Adams. And it's not what we thought we would be saying early on tonight when Murray Adams was in the lead of race number one. That is Matthew Graham on the charge, getting past Matt Hale for 13th place. Next up the road, Sam Dimelo in the number 271. He's, uh, he's had his mix before this one, hasn't he? From the back of the grid up to 13th place, and we're only on lap two. Just about a good first lap. That's fantastic stuff there. As there's uh, battles going on further up, Pelosi versus Ross Deal here over fourth place. But fair play for Math to Matthew Graham. He's, he's bringing himself back into play here nice and quickly in the early stages. End of lap number three, Mackenzie Friedman leads to Havilland second, still raging for this fight for fourth place between Deal and Palazzi. Ladd still hasn't quite dispatched of McAllister as well. Uh, McAllister continuing to have some uh, connection issues, you would see that is, is literally your worst nightmare if you're Josh Ladd. You know you need to do well in this race and not lose another uh, chunk of points, especially because he will not be getting the 20 bonus points for attending every single round because he missed Laguna Seca. He needs to go out and win these races, if not finish in the top three. A car with questionable connection and the risks associated with that. So he has now been able to get past the youngster in the 268, but that will have been a scary couple of laps for, uh, for the former Club 100 Hour iRacing champion. Yeah, absolutely. On board with the... Uh... Another man on the mission in this one, Murray Adams, challenging Alavo Castro. He will be absolutely, uh, absolutely frantic to try and get by here. I, I thought wants to be a significant part of this race. One would feel uh, off the back of a bit of disappointment in the first two races. He, he has driven on the whole, Andrew. I mean, I know there's been a few incidents and maybe moments of controversy. Might, might have a review afterwards. Uh, it's another moment of a bit of controversy there. Um, uh, don't undo the point I was going to make, Murray. I, on, on the whole, he has driven sublimely tonight. I'd still say that first race is, is that the amount of pressure he absorbed in race one was so oh. important. But there's more contact, and that's more disappointment for Murray Adams. 
and Alavo Castro entangled in that as well. Well, that's, uh, that one, I think, is... Uh, well, it'll automatically be reviewed with an SDK report. But uh, that kind of sums up Murray's night. Looking back from Henry Mackenzie Friedman, James de Havilland there hassling the back. This is a potential fight for the newcomer spot because James de Havilland uh, is under the threshold, did one event back in 2020. So he's classed as a newcomer. Those who uh, remember his time racing the BUKC for Newcastle University will remember him very well. He's often a race winner back in his days as a student. How do you play this if you're Sam Sanders? Do you, do you hold back right now and let these two fight yeah. it out? Yeah, you do exactly what Sam Sanders has done so well this evening, which is just keep yourself, you know, he's, he's been the one who's there to inherit should things go awry. And that's not to say he hasn't himself put in some good moves, but uh, he's doing exactly what he needs to do uh, right now as he follows De Havilland mm. and Friedman. As you say, Andrew, a very accomplished driver. Mr. Havilland and uh, uh, former uh, like to, grand champion, drivers, yeah, drivers champion, champion, yeah, yeah. Uh, is James de Havilland. As, uh, he pulls alongside Henry Mc Henry Friedman. They come down the hill, but it's going to be difficult to make a pass stick on the outside there. He's having a good go of it though. Uh, is James? Find any which way to. Uh, Rise, open the door. Situation with the drop scores at the moment, actually in the advantage of Henry Mackenzie Friedman. Henry Mackenzie Friedman has a did not start on his record of 11 races so far. So just by finishing this race, well, he's already done it. As long as he doesn't get disqualified in this race, which I'm sure he will not, he's already scoring a good haul of points over his worst race, uh, worst score at the moment, which is nil point for that did not start. James to Havilland, his worst results right now. Go back to round number one, a 24th place. So uh, still not a, a huge score, that 24th place, but better than a did not start. That was the race at Alton Park, where quite dramatically he exited the scene uh, down through uh, down through Nicker Brook. Sam Sanders, he knows right now this is this is good. This is very, very good for his title bid right now because he's there in third. He's improving on his own worst race results. And Josh Ladd, Ross Steele, Matthew Graham, etc. are nowhere to be seen in his rear mirrors right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really going well at the moment on that front. A race win if uh, if he can navigate uh, navigate this battle well but as we've seen so much i mean of all the circuits we've been to in this season uh, catching is one thing passing is another definitely definitely advisable uh Gogan. Graham's still on the move as he goes down the inside of Lawrence Mines to fight that one too much. Doing well though, I think, uh, in general, as Lawrence tonight. Has indeed. Uh, was uh, absent from one of the previous rounds, last round, uh, at Laguna Sake. So it's another one of those drivers who can't get the 20 bonus points for attending every single round, but still has a mathematical opportunity. And to be honest, there's only three of the, uh, the clubmen's running, so uh, they're all going to get some dollars. Uh, at the end for their troubles. Just depends how many, depending on uh, on what order they get uh, they arrive in once we get to the end. But uh, at Virginia IR, back at the front of the order, Henry Mackenzie Friedman ahead of James to Havlin, Sam Sanders, one, two, three. Two seconds clear of Ross Deal, George Pelosi, three tenths further back in fifth place. It's having a very understated night, but a very good night uh, for uh, for his own tally. Has come back strongly after a difficult start to the season, has George Belotzi. To be, uh, I think, well credited for, uh, for how he's tackled, bouncing back after the disappointments of 
both Alton Park and Okayama. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. But, uh, at the moment, looking very nice in this race. Looking, uh, lost deal on it, has to be said as well. Dropping back off the deal at the moment. So, yeah, good drive so far from Pelotzi. Just coming on to uh, number eight of this third race of round four, then. Plenty of battles still to come here. That's about that. I know some of the drivers out there have said it's not the favourite. I, I, it's been entertaining for us as spectators. I certainly feel that. Um, you know, here we are, the top three hurtling down the hill. I think definitely for the, for the entertainment side on the stream, if you've enjoyed it, do make sure that you give it a like. Uh, and if you're new around here as well, subscribe to the channel. Next round in two weeks' time to confirm. So next week is a BUKC race week in real life. It's a big one. It's the finals. The honour of being crowned British University's Carton Champion 2024, or Champions 2024, will be decided at Wilton Mill next weekend. You will be able to watch the mainstay on, uh, on Alpha Live. Uh, should put a public service announcement out that uh, DDMM Jaffa Cakes will not be accepted next Friday. We are not open to bribes whilst we're out there uh, observing on the circuit. We think you'll be getting a penalty. We'll give you one. How are you feeling? <laughs> However, John Ratcliffe and, uh, <laughs> and Reeve Taylor are, are perfectly open to... Uh, to be given the jab cakes. <laughs> John Strange doesn't like them. Anyway, back to a race going on. <laughs> Down the inside, John Aidy, this is on Sam Dimolo. That is a lovely move for 11th yeah. place. Yeah, it's been a great uh, evening. Uh, well, uh, John Aidy, he's been a great, he's, he's shown some great racing. My hesitation there is because I've just remembered it, it went a bit pear shaped in, in race two. But uh, that just underlines how well he's fought back here, actually. Yeah. It's bringing up to the fringes of the, uh, the the edge of the top ten in 11th place and the highest place to the rookie runners. So, uh, fair play to him. He's, he's playing himself back into this one. Absolutely. Uh, Murray Adams is out of the race, by the way. Uh, it's, uh, it's not circulating. There are information. So, ends his night on, uh, on lap number four. Frustrated, understandable. Uh, he's not going to be able to race back through. Will be one of his drop scores. Uh, will put him out of mathematical contention for the title. Uh, I think he's going to be more bothered about the big loss of points versus George Pelosi in particular yeah. uh, with uh, within the club and ranks. On board here then with uh, with Sam Sanders. What must be going through his head right now? This is a complete reversal of the uh, the time he had last year in the main Club 100 I Racing Championship, where again he, he was kind of in the Matthew Graham position of the speed was quite clearly there, the luck was not. He was having quite a few incidents, not uh, not of his own making. Things just seemed to happen to him a lot. And uh, it left him out of the realistic title picture. But here in 2024, this different format in this different car for the BUKC I Racing Trophy, very different story. Here's a replay. This, that was Josh Ladd down the inside of George Pelosi for fifth place. Fairly straightforward. Yeah, and uh, Josh Ladd moves himself another position up towards the front. So he's giving it his best, uh, his best shot. As uh, we'll see the cam. Let's change that. And, uh, so yeah, Josh Ladd is uh, trying his best to uh, keep him. In fact, does that? Uh, sorry, what's the situation with Josh Ladd and um, well, he missed Laguna Saker. So yes. Uh, so already everything's an improvement in 
counting? Oh. Uh, in terms of counting, yes, but uh, the um, he's kind of he's not got up to 11 counting scores yet, so he's he's still yeah. accumulating points to get up to his best 11 from 15. Yes. I know that no one's really thrown thrown a bit of an attack in recently, but uh, once again, as I say, it's not the number of overtakes that can tell you the story of the race. These top three are doing so well. Consider how much we've seen drivers struggle around this Rutskogen circuit tonight. And these top three, lap after lap, are running nose to tail. Really impressive stuff from this top three. Starting to come up onto the back of Ross Deal now. Which is not the first time we've seen these, these two battling tonight. You never know, though, for Josh Ladd. It, it, if, <laughs> I think if he is going to win this, it's going to be one of those where it's down to a point here, a point there. And Ross Steele slows and lets Josh Ladd by. Now, that's an interesting moment. It is. That is not what I expected. And indeed, he's fighting back, is he, down the hill? Yes, he is. Was that, was that legitimately just trying to get the best run out through the corner that was that looked so purposeful and uh, yeah, he's immediately fought back and taken the place and he has a bit of a lock up uh, going out oh, of the corner what and is happening here with Josh Ladd I'm a little bit confused to be honest seems to be drifting around a lot oh it's damage is there what's going on here is he a little bit right hand down no it's just I'm very confused, very confused as to what's happening there with Josh Ladd. George Pelotzi is closing in. I mean, there was nothing... There's there may have been a slowdown for Ross Deal. Uh, I suppose so, yeah, that's have true. Look at, and there may have been a slowdown coming through the corner there as well. A little cut for uh, Josh Ladd. Yeah, maybe. Anyway... Maybe. Just knows how to do a, a slowdown in style, I guess, with a bit of drifting. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, seven and a half, from, uh, about eight minutes remaining in this one. Back at the front of the order, still as he were. Henry McKenzie Friedman and James de Havilland. First, second, and then third for Sam Sanders. That is not Ross Deal directly behind. That is Matt Hale, who's now a lap down. It's close between Friedman and de Havilland down the hill. Stays the same. You feel, like, so you feel like as we get to, I mean, there's plenty of plenty of uh, race still to go here. There's plenty of time for the, the dam to burst, as it were, in terms of them going on the attack. They've marked each other so well so far. I know I keep saying it, but um, yeah, really good stuff here. Close battle here in uh, your intermediate ranks. David Whitehouse on the tail of Logan McAllister. Not the first time these two have been battling tonight. They've been uh, very similar, uh, quite a similar pace. Uh, I would say. That uh, change for fourth place. Josh Ladd has got back ahead of Ross Deal. The curious case of Josh Ladd's night continues to propel stories to the front of the order. Let's have a look at how he did it. Oh, sorry, that's that's the wrong overtake of Josh Ladd on Ross Deal. Sorry. It's the one that we that's saw right. earlier before uh, before the trip. I think I think both had slowdowns. I think they both had slowdowns. Oh there's the pass. That's oh, how yeah. he did it. Yeah. Yeah that looks interesting as well doesn't it? As look at this for the lead of the race side by side at the bottom of the hill. This is the closest that de Havilland's got to it. He'll have the inside line into the S's. 
There's almost a touch. In fact, there may well have been a touch there as De Havilland loses a bit of uh, speed mid-corner. It's going to allow Sam Sanders into the mix. Well, I was, uh, I was cogitating as to when we might see the gloves come off. There was an instance of it. For the briefest moment, uh, I think De Havilland was in the, in the lead of the race. Indeed. It's, uh, it's not quite done here then. Five minutes to go. Sam Sadlers gets through and into second place. That's another crucial couple of points for him. Remember, it's 50 uh, points in a, for a race win, 47 for second, 45 for third. Is that a slow David Whitehouse, I'm saying? Yeah, he's had an incident out there. This is uh, on board with him in the replay. Into the head. Oh, he's lost the back end. Lost the back end. So easy to do. Downhill once again. All the weight transfer goes to the front axle. Very easy to over rotate. Sam Sanders is really going for this now. And I think there's good reason to do so because there's three extra championship points at this stage of the season. That would knock a number of runners out of mathematical opportunity of winning the championship and winning that spot through to the main Club 100 I Racing Championship later on in the year. He's run wide though, here comes James de Havilland on the inside to try and retake P2. Good speed from Sanders around the outside, he holds second place for now. But that was a warning, warning there for Henry Mackenzie Friedman that Sam Sanders isn't just gonna sit there and take second place here tonight. He wants another race victory. Yeah, absolutely. Sanders got to pick his moment though, hasn't he? He's the meat in the sandwich at the moment. And uh, Havilland was very much like his second place back and would very much like to read the situation uh, so well that he gets the, the outright lead of the race. This is, uh, this is nice and uh, tasty now between these top three. We've got traffic ahead of us uh, as well. I think that's Richard Sanders, who duly pulls, uh, goes into the pits that's indeed. Very gentlemanly done by Richard. Four minutes, three minutes to go then. Essentially just two more laps for the front runners. There's another back marker ahead. It's a Lavo Castro. This is a tense one. A really tense one. Up over the crest and down the hill they'll go towards turn three. This is where Sam Sanders, who's ahead of us here at the moment as we're on board with de Havilland, had such a strong run on Friedman, but in the end ended up skirting out wide and allowing de Havilland, if anything, to have more of a look at him. Much more measured from all three this time around. In the S's around this uh, left-hander, which uh, we're calling Apricot for tonight. I'm not sure I've actually called it that much many times. But uh, that's, that's what we've gone with. Heading towards the hairpin. These drivers are so evenly matched in this battle. It's, it's brilliant to see. The uh, interesting one of Ross Deal back ahead of Josh Ladd. And Josh Ladd dropped off the back of him a little bit on this lap. So, whatever it was that we saw between the two of them, or maybe they did just both end up having slowdowns at, at odd moments or whatever. Um, that's, um, yeah, the, the, the charge of Josh Ladd up through the field has uh, somewhat stalled. Has indeed. And now and the, the critical thing here is, oh, I think he could be mathematically going thing. out. George Pelosi is on the attack here. George Pelosi trying to find a way past Josh Ladd for fifth place. And it could well come down to... 20 bonus points, which has mentioned many times tonight, Josh Ladd cannot get because he missed the whole of Laguna Seca. George Palazzi is on the attack here, going for the move down the inside. Josh Ladd leaves him enough room, but they're going to be side by side. Palazzi's going to be ahead as they come off the corner, but there's still an overlap between the two of them. So George Palazzi is going to have to give Josh Ladd move through the next corner and the next one after that, and the next one after that, still side by side. Palazzi and Ladd. Not giving a quarter inch to either driver, it's nearly interlocking wheels once again as they bolt back down the hill. Is George Pelosi going to have the position now on the inside? Josh Ladd's trying to sling it around the outside, but will run out of room, run out of rubber in tarmac as well, and a brilliant overtake eventually for George Pelosi. What a move! 
by George Pelozzi, uh, but back on Josh Ladd. That's amazing. Uh, so I, I don't want to say this to throw any shade on Mr. Ladd, but we are saying phrases tonight, Andrew, that we don't often get chance to say when commentating on 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 Josh Ladd. Uh, but that's not to take anything away from George. That was a beautifully executed move over the course of most of a lap. It was indeed. What uh, is going to happen now for the remainder of this one? We're on to the final lap. On board with James de Havilland. James de Havilland trying to find a way past Sam Sanders because his situation is this. He's got to get past Henry Mackenzie Friedman to keep the lead of the newcomers in the point standings. He's also wanting to further extend his advantage in the intermediate class. You can tell he's an intermediate because of the green details on the car. Back once again with the ladder for lots of battle. Ladder's got back through into fifth place. Logan McAllister is closing in, who seems to uh, not be having his internet troubles now. To Havland all over the back of Sam Sanders. It's going to be too deep. It's a good attempt. You can see what he was trying to do. But he's not going to be able to get around the outside there. But for Henry Mackenzie Friedman, Henry Mackenzie Friedman is going to take another victory. It's going to be his fourth of the year. He's going to throw himself right into contention for not just the newcomer award, but I think the championship outright as well. What a night it has been. What a drama filled night it has been. It's Henry Mackenzie Friedman again for the fourth time this season to take the check and flag first, second for Sam Sanders, third for James de Havilland, fourth for Palazzi, fi uh, sorry, fourth for Deal, fifth for Palazzi, jo uh, Logan McAllister found a way past Josh Ladd at the end there. So Josh Ladd is classified in seventh. That will become his worst result of the year so far. It has not been the night he would have wanted. Eighth for David Whitehouse, ninth for Matthew Graham and John Ady again top rookie and in the top 10. Entrance. Brilliant stuff. This is how it happened. It? It, oh, the moment for, for Josh Ladd through the final corner. And uh, yeah, Logan McAllister didn't need a second time of asking. Oh, his engine. Was it uh, Josh Ladd's... Uh, nah, he's, I think he just downshifted and blew it up by OK, it. right, OK, <laughs> right. Does that, does, uh, does right, Josh. OK. Uh, but yes, well, we should stress results are provisional, but that has been a big night for the top three in that final race, Henry Mackenzie Friedman, Sam Sanders and James de Havilland all take a, a big haul of points there, Howard. And uh, we'll roll on to Virginia on top, really, in this point standings. They're going to have quite the advantage going into the final round. Yeah, they certainly are. It's uh, It's been a really, really good night for them. Uh, make no mistake about it. And... Uh, yeah, I, I roll on Virginia. I have to say that the the I think there were a few more incidents out there tonight. We kind of predicted that a little bit. I think relative to Laguna Seca, when we were saying at the end of Laguna Seca that the, the driver's standards would be great, but for, for what it's worth, <laughs> for, from my perspective as a spectator, highly entertaining battles, um, and and you know the challenge around this Ruskogan circuit of, of executing a pass. It's just meant that we've seen some fantastic dogfights out there. How how much uh, how many times have we seen cars going side by side um, this this evening? That turn three and four complex, that signs loop, as we've been calling it, sets you up for a side by side battle through the S's. Uh, it's it's been a really thrilling evening of of, of racing, I've got to say. Uh, and well done, uh, but well done, yeah, to, to Henry Friedman, to, to Sam Sanders, Joe, to Havilland at the, the way uh, that one ended. For some drivers, Andrew. It, it it promised a lot and it, it didn't deliver tonight. But uh, yeah, for some drivers uh, in the championship, this one has been uh, a really crucial moment for them. Apologies, I'll uh, unmute my microphone there. Uh, it very much has had that feeling of uh, of the uh, the run into the end of the season. The next round, the final round for the BUKCI Racing Trophy for 2024 is in two weeks' time. Another new circuit for the Club 100 Sim Racing Championships community. We will be at Virginia International Raceway. Uh, another tough circuit for the drivers in the FF1600. Uh, we do still have spaces on the grid. If you are eligible, that's remember you are a driver or someone who's had 
racing experience, a racing history in Club 100 and all the BUKC, more all the BUKC. Uh, you're a member of a BUKC uh, team. You've got a, a, a recognised uh, relation to one of the above. All the details are over on the Sim Grid. Go and check out the Club 100 Racing uh, Sim Grid page. That's where we do all of our sign ups. That's where we do all of our organisation. And as we said earlier on in the programme as well, keep an eye on there over the next few weeks and the, the next month or so because stuff for through the summer and then eventually to the, uh, the main championship starting uh, in the late summer slash into the autumn and going all the way through the winter. Uh, all the details for that are going to be coming out on there. Uh, in the not too distant future if you have enjoyed the stream tonight uh, if you've missed any of the stream tonight you can watch it all back at your leisure as with the whole season uh, but if you have enjoyed it and you haven't done so already do hit that like button do subscribe as well uh, we've got more action for you coming up uh, this weekend in a DDMM variety uh, we will be uh, well myself will be working with Alpha Live at the weekend at Wilton Mill for the British Kart Championships the first event of the Motorsport UK British Kart Championships 2024. It is the O plate, the Open Championship for uh, all the Rotax categories and for Honda Cadet as well. Very much looking forward to that. Do give uh, do give that a look uh, over the weekend. Uh, BUKC finals next weekend as well. We'll give a shout out for a team working on that. And then, as I say, after that race meeting. We'll have the finale of this, the BUKC iRacing Trophy 2024. Do make sure you've subscribed and click the notification bell so you didn't, don't miss a, a single moment in all of that. That's all we've got time for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see you in Virginia in two weeks' time.